Hello everyone, my name is Jana Wolf. My name is Michael Salomon and this, this is, is The Sleeve Chef. Chef. I want to welcome everyone that's coming in and joining us tonight. Thank you so much and a big shout out to WMAR2 for their beautiful kitchen. Um, we are cooking up some really awesome stuff tonight, but first I just want to introduce myself, Jana Wolf, Registered Dietitian and Director of Nutrition at the GBMC's Comprehensive Obesity Management Program. And myself, Michael Salomon, I am a proud uh, 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 recipient of a sleeve and three years out being sleeved. Uh, graduated from culinary school and uh, here to help everybody do some delicious food and get you through uh, this process together. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to be focusing on, I don't like to call it the most important meal of the day because every meal is important in order to get your protein Agreed. in and all of your nutrition in. But it is highly important, I would say, to the bariatric population because a lot of people do end up skipping it. So we have some options today for breakfast. Absolutely. Why don't you take us through what we're going to be cooking? Yeah, guys. So we are going to be making uh, some delicious, simple chicken fajita breakfast bites. Mm -hmm. Chicken fajita is a very common, very well-known flavor profile. People love it. These are super simple. You can make them. You can prep them ahead of time, hold them, and just heat them up real quick. Have it, for have it for breakfast, Nice. take it with you. They travel well, they're delicious. Perfect, so it's easy, quick in the morning because Absolutely. you've already prepared it ahead of time. Absolutely. And then you can grab and go. And Absolutely. that's all about making your environment <clears throat> more user friendly. Right. So as you're cooking, um, if you guys want to jump in and ask your questions, we are on Facebook Live, so you can absolutely reach out to us. We love your questions. Right, whether it's whether it's nutrition questions, cooking questions, it doesn't really matter. Right, absolutely. It just adds to the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, so why don't we get started? All right, great, guys. So we are going to be making, like I said, some uh, delicious chicken fajita breakfast bites today. Uh, we are going to start with some ground chicken. So this is a lean ground chicken. Uh, we've got this guy here. So some beautiful, beautiful lean ground chicken here. Let me go ahead and add a tablespoon of olive oil to our pan. Thank you, Mindy, a little behind the scenes. This, for this is a cool. For this fantastic little guy. A lot of people have been asking about um, added oils and foods. And of course, you can use either something like this or spray or just measure out your olive oil. Absolutely. But this is a cool tool. All right, we're going to start with our chicken in. What percentage chicken did you get today? Uh, what did I get? I got lean, so I got, uh, what, 98, 99%? Oh, okay, really so high. Really good, really, yeah. really lean. Uh, so we're going to add <clears throat> a little salt and pepper here. Really, really simple. Okay. Little chicken. And, and I like how you mix the salt and pepper yeah. together, so you Simplifies don't even have to do both. A little chili powder next. Yeah. You notice I haven't broken this up yet. Nope. That's interesting. Yeah, Why? Diane. Uh, no real particular reason. I just wanted to add, I just wanted to have it in here first. So that okay. I can season this partially, and then I'll See go See how much you're actually adding to. Exactly. Add a little cumin next. Mm-hmm. All right, and I want to welcome Nicole, Janet, Christopher, Irene, Missy, Good to see Janet. everybody. Yes, Loretta, Megan, nice. Good to see everybody. Yeah, we've got a little paprika next going on here. <coughs> and then and finally, this already smells good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then finally, our garlic sea salt. Yeah. Delicious, delicious, delicious. And you know what I'm thinking? You can make extra of this and have it on the side mm -hmm. for a different meal. Absolutely. You can just do, you know, chicken fajitas on a different um, night. Such a good point. Yeah, that's a big, a big thing to do too, guys, is to save yourself, save yourself some time in your prep, and just do it ahead of time, and do it and, and kind of plan ahead of time and go, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do these proteins during this week. I'm gonna right. do chicken. I'm gonna do beef. I'm gonna do salmon i'm gonna do yeah just pick you know, two two different proteins forward. right and, and make extra that. right and make extra then you can do you know salmon with salad you can do salmon with as like a blt you can do all sorts of things yeah and um when we talk about like a uh, salad or blt if you're looking for bread that can go with this um there's tons Such of different types of low carb breads you can even make like a little um breakfast burrito with this mm -hmm. with those mission oh, this um, would be great as low carb yeah, yeah absolutely um mission makes a really good low carb wrap and then you have things like the slim um the thin slim zero carb mm, breads those, and the solo breads fantastic. they're awesome when you um toast them in my opinion mm -hmm. um so 
as you're working through this, I do want to touch on a couple of things. And you can interrupt me if you want to, you know, point out some of the different things that you're doing. Please do. But I have to tell you guys, after surgery, one of the biggest reasons for weight regain is because not of maybe even what you're eating, but because of the timing of what you're eating. So I see that issues with breakfast and late night eating coincide. So people say, oh, I'm not a breakfast person. Well, first of all, guess what? Everyone is a breakfast person. You've just trained your body not to have breakfast. You've been fasting for eight hours. It's time to have something to eat. Um, and it also sets you up for success later in the day, does mm -hmm. it not? Oh, absolutely. We were talking about having um, things like this and stuff like Quest Bars, just a available in the morning so you have something to eat and it's easy you don't yeah. have to think I about mean, it I love the idea of like think of your body like a furnace right you want to be able to you want to fuel it and you want to do it in a consistent way right so you want to have 30 grams of protein in and then you want to you know wait drink some water put another 30 grams of protein in mm -hmm. so you're consistently feeding you know, throughout the day in a measured way. Right, and Michael that, mentions 30 grams because that's kind that's of all what, we can absorb. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah, that's what I had for mine. Yeah, and um, you know, if you wanna measure out your proteins um, and you have, uh, you have a scale at home and you wanna see what, how much you're actually eating within a serving, uh, about one ounce equals around seven grams of protein. Mm -hmm. So if you're having three ounces times that by seven, you're having 21 grams of protein. If you're having four ounces times that by seven, you're having 28 grams of protein. Right. So that's just something to consider when you're preparing your meals. Um, and I, I do want to welcome everyone again and just remind you that as we're talking, as we're cooking, you guys can feel free to just send in all of your questions, um, thoughts, feelings, concerns, mm -hmm. and we will answer them. Yeah, I will say too, guys, you know, one of the things, as Janet was saying, <clears throat> for me, it was, it was simplification, right? That, that's where I think where what helped me to be successful with my surgery was that I simplified the process. I knew that... Mm -hmm. that because in the morning, initially uh, pre-surgery, I wasn't a breakfast person. And so pre-surgery, I said to myself, okay, I have to, I have to change this behavior. Right. If I'm going to do this, this is, this is a behavior I have to change. And like you said, it's, mm -hmm. just, it's just a behavioral thing. Right. And so pro-surgery, I, I used the Quest Bars. And they were just, they were a perfect Easy. little quick way to get 20, 25 grams of protein in. Mm -hmm. I knew it was good. I'd eat it slowly. I could just grab it and go. Right. And it was just, that's what worked for me. Right, and that's the basics. That's eating within an hour and a half of waking. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a lot of people that eat towards the end of the night, um, when, you know, you're winding down after dinner, we don't want the dinner to last till mm -hmm. bedtime. Um, there's no Man, reason to be, oh, I know, this is like smell o vision 101. Right. It smells so good up here. Yeah, this, this looks beautiful. Look at that. Yum. Oh, yum. Guys, this would be great for tacos as well. Or like yep. Janice said, you could do you could do a breakfast burrito with this. Mm -hmm. This would and be then, great in the application. Th and um, I would love to see this in a lettuce wrap. Oh yeah, I absolutely. think that would be delicious. I would say too, if you're going to use this as a lettuce wrap, cool it down first. Right. So okay. that the let so that the, the it don't try to put it hot in a lettuce wrap because mm -hmm. otherwise what you will end up with is all that extra heat is just when you go to fold it up. Soggy. It's going to get soggy. Yeah. Right. Exactly. This yeah. is not going to be good. Yeah. So we want to make sure that it's palatable oh, for as sure. well. Absolutely. Look at you. Like All right. Palatable. Yeah. And um, Janet's saying that this is helpful, especially since she's at the six month mark and six month mark after surgery is about the time yep. when you're at the end of your honeymoon phase. Right. So you start kind of adapting to the surgery. You can mm -hmm. eat a little bit more. You can kind of experiment with different foods. And um, it's nice to have a little bit of an option when you get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I will say as well, um, Keep in mind, yeah. uh, especially with the spices, because again, there's there's nothing really in here that's really going to kind of blow out your blow out your palate. It's not like there's cayenne. There's or, nothing or, too spicy. Yeah, but but again, like you can you can always omit the chili powder, or you can just simply back off. Of okay. It. So that's again up to preference. Uh, I know me personally, my stomach has a really hard problem with really big, 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 bold, spicy foods. Mm. For for whatever the reason is, okay. I, I used to love them, but I, I just yeah. I just can't. I have to do them in such small moderation now. Otherwise, right. my stomach just it's like it's like a kill switch on an engine. It just goes nope, and it's, that's it. And then after surgery, your stomach just becomes more sensitive, no oh, matter absolutely. what. And some people some people don't have a problem with it. That's why it's so hard to tell. Right. But um, you know why it's such an individual. By the journey is so individual. Definitely, for everybody. definitely. And um, someone had asked about. 
um, eating before bedtime. And I usually give the rule, and this is kind of a general rule, um, to not eat within two to three hours before bed. Mm. So if you're going to bed at 10, count back 10, nine, mm -hmm. eight, seven. Your last bite should be at seven, ideally. Now, this isn't always going to work for everyone, right? Because Absolutely. sometimes life gets in the way, and that's okay. Or your schedule is, is such that it doesn't provide for that right. type of flexibility. Right. So, um, you know, if you could do that 80% of the time, that's awesome. Right. And then you're not going to be sleeping on your food. You're not going to be laying down. Right. Um, you know, I've had people tell me that they eat in bed. They eat while laying down. They lay down right after they eat. And they're having stomach issues. They're also having weight regain mm -hmm. issues. So let yourself digest your food yeah, before it's, laying down. Yeah, that's such a, such a good point. Like one of the mm -hmm. things that I, I tried to avoid doing when I was you know, going through the process was eating on the go, right? Like I wanted to, I wanted to eat not so much on the go, but I wanted to eat consciously. Mm -hmm. I wanted to think about the food I was eating, right. not just shovel it in my face yeah. and be like, well, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, I mindful wanted, eating. Mindful, exactly, yeah. mindful eating, correct. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Okay, this is good. And mm -hmm. Janet asks, um, what would be a good time for a light snack? Because I usually have dinner around four to five. What's a good time or should I not even bother? Well, you have to listen. There's two types of hunger. There's this hunger, which is true hunger. It won't go away if it's, if it's actually there. And then there's head hunger. And this will go away if it's, you know, not really true mm -hmm. actual hunger that mm -hmm. your body needs calories. Um, if you're going to sleep pretty much, you know, in a few hours and that's that, you know, it depends on what time you go to bed. Um, you don't really need those calories. And if you just need something because you are feeling a little hunger pain and you think that it might affect your sleep, then I would just do like a half of a piece of fruit just to kind of take the edge off. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Um, all right, so thank you everyone for coming. Look yeah. at this. We have a lot of people on. Thank I like you. It. Great. Okay, right, what guys, are we doing so, now? Uh, so next up, we are going to be uh, mincing up our peppers here. Uh, so you really want to shoot for a nice like quarter eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch here. Get a little in, little Tiny. side cut in here. Yeah, that's what we want. We don't want them to be too too big. Right. Because again, like it's just going to be you just get this big bite of pepper. Right. And it, it's just going to be kind of overwhelming. And that'll be easy to easier to digest anyway because you're more likely to chew it up very well. So again, so what we want to do here is just keep our fingers, keep our fingers nice and tucked in. We always talk about this, but keep our fingers nice and tucked in. Mm -hmm. So you want to feel the side of the blade go up against the side of that knife. Great. Really the key thing there. And um, remember, and I'm going to say it again over and over again until you don't want to talk to me anymore. Um, everyone is a breakfast person. Stop defining yourself. Right. Stop defining yourself as I'm not a breakfast person. Getting back on a normal schedule will help you. So taking like your nighttime hours that you're eating and shifting them backwards to the beginning of the day when you actually need those calories, mm -hmm. it might be annoying. It might be painful. You might be, feel like you're forcing food down. Now don't force food down, you know, eat comfortably. Um, but have something in the morning when you wake up within an hour and a half, at least two hours of waking. All right, thank you, Britt, Rachel, Michelle, Ella, Victoria, for joining us. So and just a everybody. reminder, um, send in your questions, thoughts, feelings. Um, and I do wanna plug, I'm gonna make a plug. Please. Okay, two dates to remember. Yes. So February 6th, which is this Thursday at 6.30 to 7.30 in the Civil Eddy Center, we are going to be having a support group. It's an extra one. So there's going to be two this February. All right. Um, so February 6th, this Thursday, we're going to be having the Celebrate Vitamin representative come in and give all free samples and tons of information about um, your vitamins and minerals. So if you're having trouble actually keeping on your vitamin and min mineral schedule, which can be dangerous if you get um, deficiencies in the long run. Um, I really beg of you to come, take some time out for you, and visit us at 6.30 in the Civil Eddy Center. Now, the second one is gonna be on February 27th, and guess who we're gonna be having? Yours truly, guys. So we have a support group. Make your reservations now. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can RSVP or you can just come. You can bring family and friends. Um, we have a lot of space, so there will be food. Yeah, there will be food. So February twenty seventh is very, very tasty. is um, when Mike's going to be coming and joining us. So six thirty to seven. Always a good time. Would love a huge turnout. Yeah, it would love be great. all the questions. 
All right, good. So is there a way, Chris asks, to trick the mind so you're not head eating? Like, so your head hunger, well, first you have to feed the real hunger. If you're actually hungry, definitely eat, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't ignore the hunger until you're starving to death um, and then you're overeating. So set yourself up for success in that way. Definitely. And then, um, usually if you can keep yourself busy for about 20 to 30 minutes, um, you know, have a sugar-free mint or, uh, you know, take a walk, call water. friends, water, water. Any, anything like that. Uh, if you really are like, I am, I am full, I do not need to eat, Water, right. yes. I was going to say, yeah, there, there's a really interesting, and you, I'm sure you can elaborate a bit more on this, Jana, but yeah. there's a really interesting idea where every time you feel that hunger pain, it's not necessarily a hunger pain, but you're, you're, you're just slightly need hydration. Yeah, so it so potentially, it's a right, potentially, right. potentially could be dehydration. So, right. you know, for first line of attack is just to have a sip of water, make sure it's not dehydration because right. you might be full after you have some water. Um, and then second, keep yourself busy. Um, mm -hmm. Most people are kind of like boredom eating, reward eating, yep. relaxation eating at the end of the night. So even just like closing up the kitchen and yep. you know, at a certain point, nobody's and, allowed in the kitchen. And the other thing is too, you know, make it, make it an experience. Make it a, we all sit down at this time and we mm -hmm. do this thing, and then we all get up. Right. And, and make it, make a, make a experience. And it doesn't have it. to do with the it's food. It's not just, no, yeah. I'm sitting on the couch, watching TV, munching on blah, 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 blah. Right. Like, no, no, no. Like right. you're, we're all getting around the dinner table. We're all going to talk about something. We're going to yeah. make and it an you, experience. And then the dinner's done. Everyone helps yeah, to clean. And that's the whole and idea of kind of like being mindful, being in the moment. Yeah. Awesome. Great. All right, guys. So we've got our muffin tin tray. And we're going to go ahead and do a little greasing here. So I've just got a little spray, a little olive oil spray here that we'll use to grease our muffin tins. Nice. Good. Um, it doesn't matter which type of oil you use. A lot of people ask me, should I use uh, olive oil, canola? They all have like, they all have good properties. They're all a little bit different, mm -hmm. um, but neither one is, you know, olive oil is very good for your heart health, whatever, but just as long as you're not using it in excess. Yeah, I like to also, when you're doing this guys, you really wanna, cause you want these to come off clean. So you really wanna uh, go ahead and just take a paper towel and just go right around the sides here. Oh, that's a good idea. To make sure you get get every single part, otherwise it's just gonna have more a higher chance of it sticking. Right, and side. we don't want that. Uh, our oven was preheated to 350 degrees. Degrees. <laughs> degrees. We are live. We are live. <laughs> uh, 350 degrees for uh, we got heated up. These are gonna go in for about 20 minutes. Okay, great. Um, Becky was asking, are protein shakes okay for breakfast every day? Um, yeah, I mean, you're gonna be getting a dose of like 20 to 30 grams from a protein shake in the morning. And if that works for you and you're still continuing to have your breakfast and it keeps you fuller, you know, longer than something else, that's great. Sometimes over time, shakes, because they're a liquid, don't really fill you up as much as something like a solid food. So if you find that that's happening, you can always pair your protein shake with a piece of fruit or a boiled egg yep. just to have something solid in there with you. All right, guys. So we're going to do, we're going to fill this up about just about halfway with our ground chicken here. Trying to give a good eye here in terms of the protein in the mountain. This side here. Okay. And just some tips in order to keep up the motivation because I know we're in February right now and I'm still on my 2020 vision. Um, January was a ja tough year. <laughs> ah, you're welcome. <laughs> I like it. So, y you know, keeping up with that mo those motivators and if you've made any goals or resolutions for the New Year's, um, you know, make sure you're finding friends and supportive people to actually help you through. Like if you love going to the gym or going on walks or going on light jogs, have someone actually go with you, um, you know, to be held accountable. Um, come to support groups. We have two this, this yeah. month. Write it and down. Yeah, journal or log your foods. That's another one that you can start doing because it holds you accountable. And also, if you ever come to see me and make an appointment with me, your dietitian, um, you can bring those food logs to me and I can give you specific, unique ideas for your diet. Not everyone else's, not general guidelines like I usually give out. Um, and I can see if you're going over a calorie count or under a calorie count um, to make it a little bit more user friendly for you. All right, so we're gonna add our minced onions in next. Okay. Again, all just super simple here. Right over. Get 
Let's see if things are bell peppers. So I did I uh, minced about a, a half of a bell pepper. Uh, we're not going to end up using the majority of it, but it's nice to have around. You can always keep it and bag it up and use it later on. Yeah, you can use that in, you know, salads. Absolutely. Um, low carb wraps, dishes. Dishes. Of the any foods. sort. <laughs> All the food. Very good and Just colorful nice too, which yeah, is absolutely. good. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. Okay, right. thank you guys for just coming on. Just a quick reminder, February 6th, February 27th. Mm -hmm. Mark your calendars. Absolutely. We have two support groups this month, 6.30 to 7.30. We're going to be having our Celebrate Vitamins rep come, and we're going to have yours truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jan and I will be there on the 27th. We're going to do all sorts of delicious food. We'll have a recipe posted. Nice. Okay, right. and um, the recipe for this is posted with um, the, the recipe is posted with the nutrition label. So if you're curious about that, it's online. Um, but if you need it, if you need us to post it again, we can certainly do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. All right. Let me go ahead and grab some eggs out of the fridge here. Okay. How many eggs are we using tonight? Uh, we are using a grand total of eight eggs. Eight eggs. Eight okay. Eggs. Good. Let's get our cheddar as well. All right. This guy's cracked. As always, the fun little tip, don't crack here, crack here. You get a more even crack. Plus, you don't have to worry about it. shells as much. Okay, and Irene, um, you get to the Civil Eddy Center by parking in Iris parking lot. If you need us to send you um, a map, we can certainly do that as well. Okay, and I think we're going to be posting um, a link to the map and the directions to get there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's right. always a great time, guys. It's a, re it's a really good opportunity for you to come out <coughs> and just, you know, be in a safe environment and talk about your journey. Talk about, ask, you know, questions you might not feel comfortable asking online in, mm -hmm. the, in the regular group. Right. You know. And always remember, if you also don't want to be in a big group um, and you want a more individual approach, you can just make an appointment with me. Just call the front desk and make an appointment. Easy as that. And <clears throat> um, what I do at our sessions is, you know, I kind of do an intake of what you're doing right now and give you directions as to what I think would help you based on whatever your goals are. But a good thing that a lot of people need, and this goes back to eating breakfast and not eating at nighttime, is I put together schedules for you of when to eat. And you can put that into your phone and you can remind oh, yeah, yourself that, of when to eat. Helpful. And it is extremely helpful. So if you forget to eat or if you tend to skip meals, this is something that can absolutely help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet, that, I bet that's extremely helpful. Okay, good. All right, we've got our eggs here. So we're going to go ahead and just add our eggs in. So again, I'd fill, honestly, I'd fill your ladle up with just a little bit of egg. Just go right in. We're going three quarters of the way up. Pour slowly. No need to pour quickly. Move this guy where we can see it. So this is what we're looking for here. Right about three quarters of the way up. Because that egg is going to expand as it cooks. Is there a specific amount if you're using like a uh, measuring cup? while you're doing this or just use the ladle? Uh, I'm, it's more of an eyeball, honestly. Okay. I'd probably say it looks like maybe an ounce, two ounces at the most. Okay. But you really want to sort of, you really want to eye this. That's why I say, recommend pouring slowly. Okay, great. Okay, and I see a lot of people are saying they need that schedule. So mm -hmm. it's hard to do over Messenger. There are some things that I can and cannot do over, you know, th the internet. You, you got you to go in and see her. I got to see you because I need to know more about your schedule during the week and on the weekend. So we Absolutely. can talk more about that. So, so important. Good. Um, yeah, and if, if you are eating after dinner, and this is something that you struggle with, I would absolutely recommend making an appointment with me as well, oh, because yeah. that, that's going to be one of those things where you're shifting your eating patterns and your body's going to get used to it. Force the issue. Have something in the morning. I'm telling you. Have, your, have this, boiled eggs, 
um, smoothies. You can make your own smoothies at home. Um, you can you can actually go to Smoothie King or one of these places to get a smoothie, but you can't use any of those extra juices and honeys. You just use the frozen fruit, a scoop of protein powder, and either water, 1% milk, or unsweetened almond milk. Um, you can do yogurts. You can make yogurt parfaits with low carb um, granolas, oh, like pro parfait. granola. Those parfaits are a great idea. Use right? the, actually, that's a, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? We said boiled eggs, right? We did. Uh, protein bars, but protein I, shakes. I'll also say pick like two or three that'll work for you. Mm -hmm. Keep yeah. it simplified. Don't be like, oh, there's so many things. What do I pick? What do I pick? Pick what you're yeah. going to eat. Pick, Pick something that you would eat every day. Exactly. Don't I, overthink it. I tell everyone I used to buy um, celery sticks for a snack. And because, you know, in my head, this was a long time ago, in my head, I'm like, oh, that's the healthiest thing I could eat. No, it was the lowest calorie thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really like eating celery sticks. Right. So they always went bad. And really, at the end of the day, I was searching for something else that I wanted, and it was never as healthy as that. Right. So get something that you're actually going to eat, not what you think, right. you know. The get something that you're going to eat. Right. Figure out what that is. Figure out, you know, I could eat this every day. And use that as your option. Yes. All right, guys. We got a bit of low fat. We got a bit of low fat cheddar cheese going on here next. Uh, you could always use. I like a sharp cheddar because uh, it's a nice little contrast mm. to this. Yeah, yum. Uh, and then finally, we're gonna add some cilantro. Beautiful. Mm, yeah. Beautiful cilantro. Is so there anyone again. out there that doesn't like cilantro? Because I know that oh, some people. Um, people say it tastes like soap. That's the big. Uh, yes. That's the big one. It's a. It's a gene. I just like a little rough chop on here because I like to see that sort of full, full leaf. So okay, it doesn't, doesn't need to be finely minced, just mm -hmm. something like this. That's what you're looking for. And we're, just gonna, we're not using a bunch of it. We're just going to put a little bit on the top here. Okay. Um, and a question about if your insurance covers um, nutrition visits, you would have to check with your insurance company because yeah. there's so many different plans out there. Um, you, I might be able to find out for you, but you'd have to send me a message. Yeah. Good question, though. That is a great question. But yeah, definitely go to your carrier. I mean, it's just yes. a much, much, much easier way. Or to call them up, call them up like, hey, mm -hmm. I, I need to, here's what I'm looking at doing. How is this classified under under my insurance? And, and what, what if anything is out of pocket? Okay. Oh, we got, we got a cilantro hater. Uh-oh. Sean. What? Oh, come on. What? Okay. So there are certain people that really cannot tolerate cilantro, and I find that very fascinating. Look how beautiful, guys. Amazing. Don't they look delicious? Yay, yum, yum, good. Yum, yum, Let's go ahead and Here. pop these guys in. Thank you very much. And we've got some ones that we cooked earlier. Want to grab those? Ready to come out. Absolutely. Thank you. Great for those. Yum, yum, yum. Look at these guys. These look delicious. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, they look good. Look at that. Oh, That's great. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, I can't wait. Let's see do how, it. See how pretty and colorful these are? Let's taste them. Yeah, let's get, let's get over here. It's going to be a little bit hot. Okay, I am. we're going to put it on the... You want to put it on the board? Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Okay. Go for it. Mm -mm -mm. And yes, I am using my fingers. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. Aren't they good? Mm. Perfect. Mm. What? Okay. So you gotta try this out. <laughs> this would be. It's hot. Um, this would be at the. Mm. One month to six, six week mark that you can have this after surgery. Mm -hmm. It's soft, but it does have the ground turkey in it. That chicken. may, or I'm sorry, chicken. Um, Look at the beauty. So yum, yum, yum. It, it might be like better at the one month mark, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and you can absolutely take out the cilantro. You do not have to add it in. Yep. Um, yeah, you can very easily, you can very easily remove any one ingredient from yeah. this dish or and, add. and not have any any major impact. Absolutely. I will say that if you go and you pull, I, I don't like I don't like cumin, I don't like chili powder, I don't like paprika. You remove all of those, then you're going to see a, a difference in, in right. flavor. Right. Right. So the vegetables really and the type of protein, mm -hmm. you can kind of swap those out. You can even right. yeah. yeah. You can do ground turkey if you want. You can do you know sliced ham. Exactly. You can do it right. right. 
So um, I do have one more question that I want to answer. Is it too soon to schedule an appointment when you're only four weeks post-op? Absolutely not. You can make an appointment anytime. Sooner the better. Sooner the better. Why not? Um, and I want to just give a big thank you to everyone that's joined us. A big reminder that this Thursday, 6.30 to 7.30, and February 27th at 6.30 to 7.30, we have an extra support group on February 10th, 27th. Yeah. We have the sleep yeah. chef we'll be, coming. Uh, we'll be coming by, guys. Please come by. Uh, again, you know, make, make your reservations early. Yeah. And uh, it'll be great to see everybody. And uh, as always, you know, thank you very much. Yeah. Happy New Year to everybody. This is our first show of the new year. Yay, it's 2020. Great to be back. It's great to see all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got a very exciting year ahead of us. Yeah. And um, again, thank you to WMAR2, we are live, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the use of this beautiful kitchen and studio. Thank you guys so much for coming. And remember, you can reach out at any time and have a wonderful night. Yep. Thanks again, guys. Have a great night. Take care.